The next learning objective is map digitization, errors in map digitization, and snapping to reduce digitization errors. So the purpose of digitization is um, to bring information into GIS. Um, it's basically the idea of building a GIS database. And what are we doing in this process is we're building, bringing the coordinates, the geometry, topology, and attribute information about, um, about the ground surface. And digitization is where we, is particularly, particularly related to the coordinates. In this process, we are bringing a lot of information um, into GIS, and there are many sources that contribute um, to build the GIS database. These include historical records, uh, surveying data, sensors, and models. The historical data um, records include old maps, logbooks, written documents, photographs, and previous pre-GIS computerized databases. In case of surveying, the data can come from uh, field surveys or uh, actual GPS devices taken during the field surveys. Um, the sensors that provide data to GIS include the network of sensors on ground that are continuously relaying information, say temperature or um, other ground variables of interest, um, or it can be aerial photography over the aeroplanes or space-borne remote sensing using satellites. And lastly, the models are where we take the known information and we create new information. And these could be empirical models uh, or models based upon some geophysical phenomena. It could be interpolation, extrapolation, or it could be projections to predict future. So future models that give us future scenarios like global climate models. Um, all of these models are producing information about space and it becomes part of our GIS database. But one of the things, um, especially for historical maps or maps that are coming as a printout, um, we have to digitize those maps. And in the digitization process, what we're doing, we're converting the coordinates from maps, images, and other resources into a digital format in GIS. Previously, um, a lot of um, hard copy digitization was done and it's still being done. It's a painstaking process where you take a printed map and we have a special mouse uh, with a crosshair pointer and we digitize each point of um, lines, polygons, and points. Nowadays, it's more common to scan the map, bring it into a computer system, and then digitize lines, points, polygons uh, using on-screen on, on digitization and you will be performing that in, in your lab. And typically when we are dealing with digitization we have certain terms that we, that we stick with. When we start or end a line, the starting or ending uh, uh, point of the line is called a node. So this circle, this circle, this circle. This circle means this is the end of this line. Um, so, um, and similarly, these two circles mean they are end of this line. The vertex is all the intermediate points defining the shape of the line. So these black dots are all vertices. So when we are digitizing, we can do a point mode point mode digitization. So let's say this black line was the boundary or a road um, on the map and you click point by point. Anytime you click the next point, the point mode connects the, uh, the, the new point with the previous point with a straight line. So if you really want to capture all the curvature, you have to have a lot of points. But approximation is what maps are, so we set uh, uh, a point density and then we stick with that when we are uh, digitizing curves um, of this form. Often when we are in a straight path we have fewer points but when we reach a curvature like this it should have been more points to capture the curvature of the line. 
There's another mode called stream mode. If that is turned on, the po mouse pointer uh, is used to just traverse the curve and the points are chosen based upon a sampling density set in the software or manually. And um, it, it's important to, to, to note that when we introduce an error in digitization, it can translate into an error on the ground. So if uh, we have um, a different scales of the map, they translate into different errors on the the locations of the ground surface points. Um, so for example, if we have 1 to 24,000 map, and if our digitization shifts by one millimeter, then that means 24 meters of the adder in the location of that point. Um, and so care has to be exercised when we are dealing with digitizing uh, maps. Um, this map, of course, as you can see that um, the the, as the scale becomes smaller, the digi digitization error um, becomes larger for small shifts. Um, there are several types of digitization errors that we run into. Um, here is uh, a, a list of some from your book and some from other resources. Um, the first is error because of unsteady hands. And these are um, basically when, when you're digitizing and um, maybe your your arm gets tired or um, you you look away or you get a nudge from your, somebody nudges your desk then um, switchback can happen where you, you are intending to go forward but you end up picking up dot in the back a little bit and then you have the next point so this is easy correction we just shift this node over here or we just remove this node um, the other kind is knots, where in this process you, you come back, you go up, um, uh, and then you, you come down, and then you go this way. And this way, there's a, there's a crossover point, but there is no node here. So it's just a crossover, so it, it, it's called a knot. If there was a node here also, then it becomes a loop. Um, and both of these adders um, can happen. Um, in the digitization process and they have to be fixed afterwards um, through manual uh, shifting of these points. The another type of error is a dangle, a dangle of nodes or, or lines. Um, so this is a dangle where two lines were supposed to be connected but they are not. So um, this um, error is called dangle error. So, in other words, this line is dangling. Um, overshoot is when a, a point was supposed to be connected to a line somewhere, but it overshot and it went past. Um, undershoot is the opposite, where it was supposed to connect it, but it didn't get connected. It didn't. It stayed behind. Both of these errors um, can be connected by a process called snapping that will be introduced in a little bit. Uh, and dangles as well, of course, can be connected. Uh, the slivers are when we have two overlapping polygons and there is this portion. This this point, these two points should be same if these polygons are adjacent polygons. But because in the digitization process, these points got separated, so this sliver is an artificial um, area that shouldn't be there. It's either part of this polygon or part of this polygon. So these um, slivers are also digitization errors that can be removed through automatic processes. Um, last two are pseudo node and no node. A pseudo node is an extra node created. So you, you as you're digitizing, you come here and you click twice. So it will end up capturing two nodes uh, or two vertices in this case at this point. Um, and or if it was ending, it'll be two nodes, and it's called pseudo node, which means there's an extra node there that can be needs to be removed. The other one is no node, so you have crossing of two lines, and it doesn't mean it's a crossing if there is no node, um, especially in GIS when we are dealing with 2D uh, GIS, there should be a node here unless. We are dealing with 3D where this line was a bridge going over the other road. 
uh, which we're not dealing with. So in, in, in planar GIS, uh, uh, this would be a no node. So all of these digitization errors um, can be prevented. The ones that are caused by, um, by unsteady hands um, can also be prevented by snapping, but especially overshooting, undershooting, and dangles can definitely be prevented by process of snapping. And this is a process of automatically setting a nearby point to have the same coordinates. Um, it's set by a tolerance, so a circle around a point is the tolerance. It's a distance, um, limit of the distance within which it will snap to other feature. So for example, a node snapping will be where two nodes snap together if they are within the tolerance distance. A line snapping will be that a point gets snapped to a line when it is within a tolerance distance. So if we look at this example, um, these two points will be snapped. This point will be snapped to the, to the line. This point will be snapped to the line. But this snap point will not because it's not within the tolerance distance to any of the other features. The line snapping is also called edge snapping. So uh, the last two topics of this um, objective are line smoothing and um, line thinning. So in case of line smoothing, we add new points to to make the line smooth or uh, bring curvature into it. And in line thinning, we remove. So suppose this these were the four points that define our line and we want to introduce a curve into it, what we can do is we can create a mathematical function that adds points to this uh, line and makes it a curved line. And um, it, it is not necessarily uh, that a single polygon should fit the whole set of points. For example, in this case, one to five points have one function, f of x, and then five to 11 has have uh, a different function g of x and uh, we can take the digitized points and then fit a smooth line through them through a process of line smoothing. On the other hand when we are line thinning we have too many points and we are trying to reduce the number of lines. It can happen in case of a raster converting a vector to raster the line may become a very thick line so in that case thinning means we reduce the number of pixels around the line and we just stick with our single pixel line. Um, but if it was a vector type, we're trying to remove extra points and simplify the line um, by thinning it. One of the algorithms you commonly use is called Lang algorithm. And in this case, we set a, a weeding distance or weed distance and anything outside, um, anything inside the weed distance uh, can be removed because it doesn't provide any extra information. So if we are looking at this example, um, the, 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 the distance of weed sets up a buffer around this spanning line between these two points. And we can see that these two points are outside the buffer, so they have important information about this line. On the other hand, this point is um, too close. So if we were spanning from this point to this point, then this point is not really providing any additional information and can be omitted to connect these two points with a straight line. So when we go through, use a Lang algorithm for all the line, uh, we end up reducing. So in this case, uh, this point and this point are uh, removed or the line has been thinned.